Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, 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 good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I... Welcome, 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 welcome. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Hillcrest Worship. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sabbath to you all. Good morning to everyone. Glad to have you this morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you're up. I hope you're up and at them, as they say. I hope that uh, you are ready and refreshed. I trust that you're having a beautiful Sabbath day, a beautiful day uh, to rest and to relax in the Lord's favor in your life and God's uh, blessings. Happy Sabbath to you. Good morning. Good morning, Elder. Good morning. This is Pastor Michael Hayes back with you. It is a lovely and incredibly lovely uh, July 4th, in fact. It is the 4th of July, uh, Sabbath afternoon, and we are glad to have you with us this lovely Sabbath morning. Uh, happy 4th of July to you, uh, and I pray that you will find freedom uh, in Christ, in <laughs> in the world uh, where you are today. Of course, we all know that Independence Day is not the independence that uh, people uh, would proclaim that it is. It's a completely different uh, mindset and attitude. Uh, ironically, ironically, July 4th is representative of the fact that the colonists were protesting. <laughs> were protesting their need for independence. Isn't that something? And a lot of people in America say we shouldn't protest. Isn't it funny? When the whole country was so-called born out of so-called protest against the motherland, against England at the time, yet they say we can't protest. So they can protest for their independence, but we can't protest for ours. But that's a, that's a whole nother sermon for another day. Nonetheless, God is good. We are blessed to have you with us. Our Independence Day is not today. Our Independence Day is the day that you and I accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That was our Independence Day, our real Independence Day. Somebody say amen. So we can celebrate that. I don't know if we can celebrate July 4th in the terms of the way that it's normally so-called celebrated, but we can celebrate God uh, uh, setting us free and uh, uh, creating a new life for us in his goodness and his grace. Praise the Lord. We're glad to have you with us at Hillcrest Worship today. May the Lord bless and keep you. We want to uh, First of all, I want to thank you for all of your support. I want to thank you most of all for your faithfulness to God. Uh, you guys have done a great and excellent job in continuing to serve the Lord with gladness and coming before his presence with great singing knowing that he is the Lord God. It is he who has made us, not we ourselves. And you have shown that in your faithfulness, in your giving and tithes and offerings. And I thank God for you and I appreciate you so much. I want you to continue to support uh, the work of God and the things of God uh, with your tithes and offerings, as well as uh, with your uh, ministry and your prayers. Please continue to pray. Uh, for the church and for ministry. Uh, there's some things we're looking to do. Hopefully this week we're going to hook up with some people that are going to allow us to gain access to food and clothing and other things that we will be able to give out prayerfully on the campus of the church. Uh, so we're working on those uh, connections now. So just pray and ask the Lord to, to guide us and lead us. And there's so many people who are reaching out to me, asking about the Sabbath, asking about the seventh day, uh, asking about our faith. Uh, people that I don't know, people just calling from out of nowhere who just want to know the truth of the word of God. So continue to pray and ask God to lead us and guide us as we uh, uh, reach out to people and help people, guide people towards the cross of Jesus Christ. God has been good. You have been faithful and you are a blessing to the kingdom of God. And God sees your faithfulness and he loves you with a deep and abiding love. Well, with that, we're going to get right into our 
uh, message for today. Today's message is a uh, part two out of part three. We're going to have three parts of this message uh, where we're talking about coping with troubled times, coping with troubled times. That's the title of the series. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, dealing with, uh, uh, you know, troublous times, if you will, perilous times. Uh, this week, uh, we're moving forward in our message and we're looking at 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. Now, many of you know we are living in perilous times. We're living in troubled times. Amen. We're living in confusing times. And so God is trying to show us through the pen of Paul here as he writes his letters to Timothy, uh, how it is that we can navigate these muddy and temp tempestuous waters uh, of confusion and desperation and troubled times where people are hating one another and despising each other. And the love of many, if you will, is waxing cold. Uh, people do not have natural affection for their own family members. Uh, we learned about that on last week. And so we're looking here uh, today at a new message uh, and we're entitling it Evangelizing Evil. Just look with me here, if you will, 2 Timothy chapter 3, and we're looking at verses 6 through 9. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 6 through 9, for this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further for their folly shall be made manifest unto all men as theirs also was. Today we're speaking from the subject, as I've said, entitled Evangelizing Evil. Evangelizing Evil. Let's bow our heads briefly for a word of prayer. Uh, God, we thank you today for your mercy and grace, your kindness towards us. Your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures to every, and, uh, every extended generation, Lord. You are a magnificent and powerful God. Lord, many have tried to stamp out your truth. Many have tried desperately to get rid of your truth and live by their own uh, commands, by their own laws and their own rules. But Lord, your truth continues to stand forth as a pillar of light in the midst of the darkness. And Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy in allowing your truth to continue to be disseminated by your pastors, your preachers, your leaders, and most of all, by your word and your Holy Spirit. So God, manifest your truth today in a special way in this little sermonette. Lord, please speak to our hearts and reveal to us the truth of the word of the living God. And Lord, tell us and show us the righteous and holy way and allow us, Lord, to have the courage to follow your lead. In Jesus name we pray. Give us this day our daily bread. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Evangelizing evil. Evangelizing evil. What a, a weird title somebody might be saying, and I understand. I want to begin with uh, just kind of a, a, a brief uh, observation. I was watching not too long ago a story on a young basketball player. I'm a I am a basketball aficionado of sorts. Uh, I love basketball. I pretty much have always followed uh, the sport uh, ever since I, I was able to pick up a basketball. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's, that's beside the point. I was watching this week a uh, kind of a little small documentary, an interview, if you will, with a young man. His name is Taylor Horton Taylor. Uh, he is a young man, 18 years old, who was drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, and he is now currently not on the main team, but he is on the uh, what they call the G League team. So the G League team is a is a, a group of teams that the NBA has set up 
in order to get those who aren't quite ready for the real show uh, to hone their skills and to train and, and to grow into uh, the pathway that the particular team would have them to go to hone their skills, to, to build up their talent uh, so that they can be ready uh, coming soon to be able to go up to the actual NBA team that they are connected with. And so Taylor was drafted right out of high school, 18 years old, uh, to the Los Angeles Lakers. Didn't go to college. Uh, and so he started working with the, the, the uh, G League team for the Lakers. Uh, <clears throat> and he, he talked about how, you know, because they were interviewing him because he's done so well. He, he's grown. Uh, quite a bit since he's been there. He's only been there about three or four months, maybe four or five months, I'll say. Four or five months or so. Uh, and, you know, well, actually, it's probably been longer than that. But anyway, um, so, you know, they were just, uh, you know, talking to him. They were interviewing him and saying, listen, how, you know, how have you managed your life? How have you managed yourself and been able to improve your skill set, improve your basketball acumen and how have you been able to do this? And he told them a story. He said, when I first got here, you know, I was a young pup. I was a young guy. I was just coming out of high school. And he said, there were so many different uh, things opening up to me in terms of, you know, distractions, if you will. There was, you know, people were offering me money to come here and do this and come here and do that. People were offering me uh, movie parts or uh, uh, you know, small commercials or, or doing this, that, and the other thing. And uh, he said, at first, you know, it was drawing my attention. I was really interested in those things because I was thinking about, well, you know, I do want to make money and everything else. But here's what he said. He said, but I realized in talking with my coaches and in talking with my co-laborers uh, in the work of playing the game of basketball and in talking with my fellow compatriots at arms, my other uh, teammates, if you will, uh, they all began to tell me and discuss with me what I needed to do. And I realized, I realized, here, here, here's what he said. Here's what he said. He said, I realized I needed to make the main thing the main thing. That's what he said. That's what he said. He said, I realized I had to start making the main thing the main thing. He said, I came here to play basketball. That is the truth of the matter. That's why I'm here. I'm not here just to make money. I'm not here to create movies or create a book a book line or I'm not here to uh, do commercials or, you know, that, I'm not here for that. I, that. You know, those are side issues that maybe along the track I might be able to, 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 to build or put into my portfolio. But at the end of the day, I've got to learn to put the main thing as the main thing. In other words, I've got to take all of these other distractions, move them out of my mind, move them out of my heart, and put my commitment into what I know to be true. That is that basketball is my life, basketball is what I love, and basketball is what I need to be about. He said, when I did that, he said, everything began to fall into place. He said, my shots started falling a little bit better. He said, my dribbling started working out a little bit more. He said, my defense went up a notch or two. He said, my teammates started loving playing with me. He said, things started working out so good. And now I'm right on the precipice of joining the main team in less than a year since I've been here. And I'm only 18 years old. Why? Because I learned to put the main thing as the main thing, the main thing as the main thing. He said, I had to realize that all this other stuff, though it might seem good, it might sound good. That's not the truth of my life. I had to commit myself to focusing on the main thing. And that is the message really encapsulated today that I want to give to you this morning. Paul is talking to young Timothy and what he's trying to get across to Timothy, who was a young preacher uh, coming up. And we talked about this on last week. He's a young preacher coming up uh, in the word of God and in the church of God. And he's about to take over uh, some churches here. And he's trying to let young Timothy, a young pup, a young rookie preacher, if you will, he's trying to, uh, he's trying to couch for him and he's trying to open up his eyes to the truth and the reality 
of what it's really like to get in the ministry. And the first thing he tells them is, listen, you've got to understand something. This life is not easy. <laughs> out, getting out here preaching and delivering the word of God to the people of God and leading people to the cross of Jesus Christ is not as easy as it might first seem. He said, there are actually people who are going to be in opposition against you. There are actually individuals in the church who are going to hold you back. There are people who are going to lead a, 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 a storm of a wave of, of, uh, 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 of counter uh, 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 of counter attacks against you and what it is that you're trying to accomplish through the word of God. He said, you need to understand that. And he said, here's what I'm going to tell you. First of all, we talked about this on last week. He said, I want you to understand where it comes from. It comes, the source of this trouble that is going to cause you issues in disseminating the word of God to people is number one, there are going to be people in the church who are more in love with themselves than they are with God. He said they're going to be a people who have this form of godliness. They look godly. They act godly from time to time. He said, but the truth of the matter is they are people who only care about themselves. He said they've got the three P's of false love. False love, P number one is they love, they're in love with their own personhood. They're in love with their own personhood. He said P number two is this. They're in love with their own purse. They are in love with the money that comes in and out of their hands. And number three, they're in love with their own pleasures. He said they're more in interested in being pleasure filled than they are in pleasing God and his kingdom. That's the problem that you're going to find, Timothy, when you're coming into the church. There are going to be people who are involved in the church who are in love with themselves, in love with money, and in love with pleasure more than they are in love with God. Are you with me today? We talked about that on last week. And so today, we were talking about the source last week of the trouble. Today, we're talking about the spread of the trouble. The source of the trouble is people who would rather love themselves than love God. Today, we're talking about the spread of that trouble. The spread of that trouble is that these people, these people who are in love with themselves, these people who are in love with making money, these people who are in love with their comfortable lives and their pleasure-filled, lustful lives, these people are now going to become, watch this, watch this, they're going to become evangelists. They're going to become evangelizers. Oh, but they're not going to evangelize for the kingdom of God. They're going to evangelize for the kingdom of hell. They're going to evangelize for the kingdom of the devil. They're going to evangelize for the kingdom of evil and wickedness in high places. They're going to evangelize for the enemy. And they're not even going to know it. <whistles> Lord have mercy. And here's what I want to say to you today. You and I need to watch out for these false preachers, these false teachers, these false elders, these false deacons, these false Christians, hallelujah, who come in running around talking about new stuff, new revelations, new things. Are you all listening to me today? I want you to hear me today because I'm coming straight to the point. I'm not going to take long today. I'm going to come right at you with the word of God. This is what he says. He says, these people are going to come into the church and they're going to start evangelizing to draw away disciples after them. He says, Timothy, you've got to watch out for this kind of stuff. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I need to watch out for it. How do we tell? How can we know who these people are? All you got to do is look at the three loves. Are they in love with themselves? Are they in love with their own works? Are they in love with their own words that come out of their own mouths? Are they more interested in their uh, propagation and their growth than yours or anybody else's? Are they solely concerned about themselves? Ladies and gentlemen, they're a false prophet. Are they more concerned about money for themselves? And sometimes, you know, you can't tell immediately because they try to cloak themselves under a sacrificial type of uh, mindset where people think, oh, they're giving up. But, eventually, but ultimately, in the dark side of their lives, they're sucking in the dollars. They're sucking in the money. They're drawing away money towards their own particular efforts and their own plans. 
And are they more interested in pleasuring themselves than they are in pleasing God? And they are in pleasing others and helping others. Are y'all with me today? If you've got anybody like that in your church, ladies and gentlemen, they are false prophets. They are false prophets. Anybody who's claiming to be a person of God who has any one of those three loves, not to mention all of them, is a false prophet. I'm going to say it again for emphasis. Anyone who has a love for personhood, a love for their purse, and a love for their pleasure is somebody who is a false prophet doctrine, false disseminator, false prophet. Lord have mercy. And what they do is, watch this, watch this. What they do is they prey on individuals in the church who haven't yet made the main thing, the main thing in their lives. They prey on people who don't know what the main thing is quite yet who haven't settled on what the truth is in the church. Are y'all with me today? They prey on people who have issues and concerns in their own personal lives, who have sins in their own hearts, who feel guilty all the time because they know they're not pleasing God. They prey on these people and they come at them with false truth and false doctrines so that they can draw away those people to follow after them. Not after Jesus, but to follow after them. That's why you got to learn, hallelujah, to make the main thing the main thing. So Paul is telling us that these people are in love with themselves. These individuals, these individuals who love themselves, their pleasures, and their purses more than they love God, he says you need to turn away from them. He said, you need to get away from them, Timothy. He said, don't worry about them. Don't waste your time trying to get them involved in what you're trying to do. Don't, don't, don't waste your time. These people are not of God. They are false prophets. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible talks about false teachers all throughout the Bible. False teachers and false prophets, God says, are an abomination. People who lie about the word of God and who draw away people away from the truth of the true way of God. Are you listening to? And this is very, very necessary for us today because ladies and gentlemen, there's so many false prophets out here. I can't even count. Them. I mean, and I'm not talking about people who claim to be preachers. I'm talking about just people out here, period, who running around talking about, I got the truth. No, I got the truth. No, let me show you the truth here. Let me show you this. Let me show you that. And they're, all they're doing is disseminating and spewing up all of this chaotic garbage that you and I don't even have the ability to discern between. It's like what I can't tell what truth is. You're throwing so much information at me. That's because nobody knows what truth is anymore. Lord have mercy. And God said, I'm tired of these false prophets coming out here. He said, I'm going to expose them for who they are. Notice 2 Timothy chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 16, sorry, 15 through 17. This is what Paul said to Timothy just a chapter earlier about false prophets. This is what he said. He said, uh, this is coming from the uh, um, contemporary English version because I like the way it, it, it reads. He says, do your best to win God's approval as a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed and who teaches only the true message. Verse 16, he said, keep away from worthless and useless talk. It only leads people farther away from God. He said that kind of talk, that kind of conversation, that kind of communication is like gangrene that can't be healed. He said, it's like a virus. Oh, he said, it's like, a vi it's like COVID-19 out here killing people's minds and hearts and they can't get any healing. Are you listening to me? The word of God today. He said, talk, talking to people about frivolous things that have nothing to do with the word of God. If, yeah, listen, if you're not talking about the word of God, if you're not speaking to me about God and his coming again, if you're not talking to me about Jesus and the son of the living God, if you're getting me all involved in all this extracurricular stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the Lord, 
I don't want to hear about it. I don't have time for it because these are the last days and these are troublous times, perilous times. I don't have time to focus on the wrong thing. I've got to put the main thing as the main thing. Somebody say amen. Notice with me, Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15. Notice what Jesus says about these false teachers, these false prophets. Notice how he describes them. Watch how he describes them. He says, beware of false prophets, Matthew 7 verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Ravenous wolves, wolves who tear apart the flesh. Are you listening to me today? Are you listening to the word of God today? He says, be careful, beware of false prophets. Now, Jesus said it. If Jesus said it, then we need to heed to what he's saying. That's telling me that there are false prophets out here. It's not a possibility. He's saying there are false prophets out here in the church. And they come, watch this in sheep's clothing. Watch this. They appear to be followers of Christ, but they're not. He said inwardly, they're trying to eat up the sheep of God like ravenous wolves. Whew. Mercy. He said, these are people who don't care nothing about God. All they care about is themselves. They just want to eat and feast on the lives and the weaknesses of others. Wow. Notice what Ezekiel says. Ezekiel brings out something about these false teachers and false prophets. Notice what Ezekiel says. Ezekiel speaking for God here, speaking for God here, talking to the Israelites here or talking to the nation of Israel. Notice what he says. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 7 through 8. Verses 7 and 8. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 7 and 8. Notice what Ezekiel writes. He's speaking for God. This is God speaking to his people. God says this, have you not, have you not seen a vain vision? And have you not spoken a lying divination? He calls false teachers, those who see vain visions and those who speak lying divinations. Whew. He says, whereas you say the Lord said it, albeit I have not spoken it, God says. He says, you're saying that I said it, but I didn't say it, he says. Verse eight, therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, says the Lord God. God does not like people who talk for him and speak lies, speak untruths, who speak falsities. Are you all listening to me today? God doesn't have time for them. He does not have time for people who are taking upon the mantle themselves of speaking for God and they don't even talk to him. Watch this, 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Peter has something about to tell us about false prophets. He says, but there were false prophets also among the people. 2 Peter 2 verse 1. There were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. You privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Peter says, these people, these guys are going to come into the church and they're eventually going to lead people away from Christ. Woo, the one who set us free. You've got to watch who you listen to. You've got to pay attention who you're focusing on. Are you all listening to me today? You've got to pay attention to what you listen to on YouTube. You've got to pay attention to what you're receiving on Facebook. You've got to pay attention to uh, uh, what's going on. Or maybe I should say, you may need not pay attention to what you see on Twitter or what you, uh, uh, what you, uh, 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 what is sent to you or shown you on Instagram or any of these social media sites. You need to be careful about what you listen to on the news because everybody has a false gospel that they're out here trying to preach. Are you listening to me today? You got to be careful. You got to make sure to, ladies and gentlemen, discern 
God's word first before you listen to anybody else's word. Because, ladies and gentlemen, there's so much chaos out here. There's so much confusion out here. I'm telling you, I haven't heard so many different conspiracy theories in my lifetime. In my lifetime, like I have in the last of two months. I've heard conspiracy after conspiracy. And I've heard pe people asking me. That nobody, it, it, it's amazing. Nobody seems to know what the Lord has to say. Or people seem to think they know what the Lord has to say. And it has nothing to do with the word of God. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. The confusion out here that's happening. False prophets are on the rise. And people are trying desperately to make money by telling deceptions and vain divinations to people. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to understand something. There's somebody in the church who's trying to trick you. Mm. There's somebody who claims to be a Christian who's trying to fool you. That's what the word of God says. He says it is happening. It's going to happen. Are you all listening to the word of God today? And here's what Paul said. Here's what they're going to do. He says they've got three ways that they come at you. Three ways. I'm going to disseminate this and then I'm going to let you go. Three ways in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 6 through 9. He says these false teachers, these false prophets, they've got three ways that they come at you. They got three ways that they learn to, e that they have learned to evangelize the false truths, the false, fake, evil, wicked ways of the enemy. <sighs> three ways. Way number one. Way number one. I'm going to cut this short. Way number one is this. False teachers seek to come into your private lives. The, 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 see, watch this. Hear me, hear me. Verse 6. Verse 6. Look at verse 6. Look at verse 6. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly women laden with sins. Lead captive silly women laden with sins. Watch this. They creep. You see that word creep? They creep into your houses. In other words, they come in almost undetected. You don't even realize. Next thing you know, they're in your house. In other words, they're in your private life. They're in your private life. They're coming in, they're coming at you in your private time. They're not just coming at you publicly. They're coming at you in your private time. They're spending time with you when normally you're taking time down and resting and trying to do. No, they're coming in. They're getting involved. They're getting in your house. They're coming down your lane. They're coming up on your, on your street. Are you all listening to me today? They're getting in your private mind, inside of your thoughts. Well, how do they do that, Pastor? How do they do that? Because people, we can't even get into people's houses now. They won't even let us. The social distancing. Well, there's something called technology. There's something called technology. I wish I had help in here. And these false teachers... They wish to infiltrate your private life with false doctrine and false teachings. They want to evangelize you to follow after their false truth through email, through podcasts, through go lives, through Facebook, through messenger, through texting, through television and radio, through the internet through your cell phone, any way they can get to you in your private life. That's what they're going to do. That's what they're going to do. I have, listen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you right now. I have never received so many messages of false truth in my life. People privately trying to get me to follow after this foolishness. Trying desperately to get me. Pastor, you need to see this. Pastor, you need to watch this. Pastor, pastor, pastor. Look at this. What? A, look at this. Here, listen. I believe this. I believe that. I believe, listen, I don't care what you believe. I know what I believe. <laughs> see, that's the point. That's the point. You've got to learn to make the main thing the main thing. You've got to know what you believe. 
Because ladies and gentlemen, if you don't, listen to me, very carefully, listen to me. If you don't know what you believe right now, you're going to fall for any wind of doctrine. Anything anybody says, you're going to follow it. You better know what you believe. You better know who you believe in. You better, oh my God. You better get in this word right here. You see this? You better get in that word. You better know the word of God for yourself. Don't you know, listen, don't you wait and depend on nobody else to read the word of God to you, to disseminate the word and the truth of the Lord to you, to break down and uh, interpret what God is saying. You ask God to reveal to you the truth through the Holy Ghost. And God will lead you to his clarity of righteousness in his word. You need to get in this word. You need to know what you believe. You need to know who you believe in. This is the problem today. We got people out here who still don't believe in the Sabbath. They've been having this all their life and they still try to figure out, well, I don't know if the Sabbath is real. You don't know. Have you read the word? Do you read the word? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. Well, if you don't know, honey, you better get in this word because you're about to be taken up with a sweeping of a wind of doctrine. Paul says they come in and they talk into the homes and the houses and the private lives of what he calls silly women, silly women. Now, this is not, ladies and gentlemen, that he is not trying to uh, talk about women in general. But what he's saying is, is that these particular ladies at this particular local church had problems. They didn't have any husbands and they were uh, living in guilt and shame of their own lives. And what was happening was, I wish y'all had help in here today. They would, watch this. These were women who were just looking for anybody to, to take the lead in their life. He said, I know it says silly women, but the real word in the Greek means little or childish, childlike women. These women were like children waiting on anybody who looked like they had control, who looked like their leaders to just take them up and they follow after them. This is what was going on. In other words, these were women who chill, who were chill, childlike in their faith. They didn't know what they were supposed to know. They didn't make the main thing the main thing. Mm, mm, mm. They didn't know the truth. They were just sitting there letting people pour their mess into them. Are you all listening to me today? Honey, you got to know what you believe today. You, you can't play games today. You can't play games today. You cannot just let, <laughs> you know, well, I'll figure it out later. No, you need to figure it out right now. You need to go to the word now. You need to figure it out. Do you believe in what God has said or not? You got to make a decision because if you don't make a choice, if you don't make a decision, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be made for you by the enemy of God. Here's what they do. They come in into your private life. They send you all these little different text messages. They send you all these little messenger messages. They send you every kind of post from Facebook, Facebook Live, YouTube. They send you whatever they can send you to get you to fall in line with their agenda. And so many people are out here just as silly as these women were. Just childish, don't know what to believe. They don't know what they believe in. They've been in the church for years, been in the church for years, heard sermon after sermon, heard preaching after preaching, and they still don't know what they believe. That's why you got to settle yourself on this is what I believe, and I don't care what anybody says, this is who I believe in. Somebody say amen out there. Hallelujah. He says they're going to come in and they're going to try to get into your private life. They're going to try to get into your private thoughts. And here's what they're going to do. They're going to try to get you to become an evangelist like them and start telling your friends and family about all these extracurricular, uh, uh, you know, all of this stuff that ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of information out here. There's a lot of truths out here, so-called. There's a lot of, you know revelations out here that are being revealed right now. But ladies and gentlemen, let me just say this to you. That's all good. That's all wonderful, you know, and all that. But I'm making the main thing the main thing. If it doesn't have to deal with this right here, if it's not in this word right here, I don't care anything about it. 
I don't want to know about it. Because this right here is what's saving me. You understand what I'm saying to you? This right here. This right here. You see this word right here? That's what's saving me. Not following after some, oh, this little tangent. Somebody found this and somebody found that. Oh, that, no, I don't care. Nothing. Look at this video past. Did you see this video? Look at what he or she shared about so-and-so and about so. I don't care. I don't care. Does it have to do with the word of God? If it doesn't have to do with the word of God, don't send it to me. Don't talk to me. I don't need to know it. I don't care. If it doesn't have to deal with the word of God, please move on because you're not evangelizing me. Somebody say, you're not evangelizing me. You're not going to evangelize me. <laughs> you can evangelize them down the street, but you can't evangelize me because I know in whom I have believed. Hallelujah. And whom I have to deal with in the last day. Somebody say, amen. The second thing they do. The second thing they do, these false prophets, these false teachers, first they come in and they try to take over your private life. They try to get into your thinking. They try to get into your mindset. They're trying to prick your mind. Then the second thing they do is this. <coughs> Excuse me. They try to tie into and hook into your emotional and sensual perceptions. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse, verses, uh, I'm sorry, verses 6, the end of verse 6, says, they lead captive, notice the word captive, these silly women laden with sins, led away by their different forms of lusts, of lusts, of lusts, pleasures. Are y'all listening to me today? And so what they do is they try to find out what pleases you? <laughs> Woo! And whatever they find out that pleases you, that's the gospel that they preach to you. They reach out to you because they know that you've got itching ears waiting on somebody to coerce you and caress you and tell you, oh, you're fine. Oh, you don't have to change. Oh, no, honey, don't worry about it. You're, you're fine. No, you're doing good. No, you know, you don't need to repent. No, you keep on doing what you're doing. Honey, it's okay. We love you. We appreciate you. I need you to come tonight to our meeting. I need you to bring your money with you because we're doing something special. God's got something special for you. Oh, he showed me. He showed me something about you in a vision, in a dream. I'm going to tell you tonight when you come. I had a vision about you. I had a vision about you. God showed me you in a dream. This is the kind of foolishness they'll tell you. And the sensual nature, the sensory perception of people is drawn away. Is caught, it, watch this. It's held captive, Paul says. It's captivated by these incredible false teachers who have a talent for seeing the weaknesses in people. Look at David Koresh. Look at Jim Jones. All these people, are you all listening to me? These false teachers who led people to their deaths. How did they get a hold to these people? How in the world? They spoke to their weaknesses and their senses. Are you all hearing me today? And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell, let you know something. Please don't think that you're above it. Please don't think, oh, I would never do so. I would never follow it. Please don't think that. That's why God gives the warning. Because you and I, we could easily be swept up into this foolishness. The foolishness of false teachers, of false men who pretend to know God but don't know him. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And that's going to lead me to my next point. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. What do you mean, pastor? The next point. Here's the next point. First point is, false teachers come to you seeking to enter into your private life, into your private mind, into your private thinking. Secondly, they grab a hold to you and hold you captive by way of your senses, your sensory, your emotions, your emotional downfalls, your issues, your concerns. They seek to find pleasing ways to help you. 
Are you all listening to me? And then the third way is this. Number three, they never cause you to grow spiritually. They never cause you to grow spiritually. Notice with me, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. These false teachers, they come in and they're telling you all this stuff, but you're never growing. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Watch this. Paul says their main focus, their main focus is to get you to depend on them and not on the word of God. They want you to believe in them, not God's word. They want you to be dependent upon them. And by that, you, by doing that, you never really grow spiritually because you're never settled in the truth. Are you all hearing me today? You don't even know what truth is. You're more dependent upon him than you are upon God. Their focus is to keep you dependent on them for new information, for new revelation, for new rhema word, for new truth. Oh, there's constantly new truth. They always got some new truth that they bringing out. Some new revelation that God gave them. It's always something new. Always something new. What about the, what about the truths, the old truths of the word of God? Nobody wants to talk about that. Nobody wants to talk about that. And we never grow into, we never settle in, we never commit ourselves to the truth. That's why we got people out here who still don't even know if the Sabbath is true. They don't even know if the Sabbath is real. Let me tell you all something. You all better wake up. You all better wake up. The Sabbath is real. And I'm going to tell you something right now. People who are out here talking about, oh, the Sabbath isn't a big deal. No, what matters is we just need to love one another. Let me tell you something right now. The devil wants us to live in a lie because all he has to do is get us to believe a lie and he'll have power over us. That's what demon possession is. Demon possession is when we, you and I, conscientiously decide to believe a lie. And when we believe said lie, the devil has full sway of our lives. He's got control of us. I know you don't believe it, but it's the truth anyhow. That's what happened with Eve and the garden. Eve had one little small truth that the devil questioned. It was one little simple thing. It didn't seem like it was a big thing. One little simple thing. Go ahead and eat from this tree. Oh, God doesn't want you. Oh, come on, girl. Come on over here and eat some of this fruit. Come on over here and take some of this tree. One little small thing. Oh, it ain't no big deal. Oh, as long as I love my husband, it don't matter. It does matter. It does matter. It does matter. It matters. Truth matters. I wish I had help in here today. And ladies and gentlemen, she went over to the tree. Look at Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. She went over to the tree and she listened to that fool up in the tree talking about, oh, did God say you couldn't eat from this? And she's like, well, well, he said we eat from everything in the garden, but this one little tree he told us we couldn't eat from. And he said, no, if we eat from it, we're going to die. And he said, you're not really going to die. Watch this. From one simple truth. One, watch this. Watch, I want you to get this. Please get this. From one simple truth of not eating from a tree, God said. God said, don't eat from this tree. From one simple truth, the devil grabbed a hold of her mind and told her, no, you're not going to die. God is trying to trick you. God is lying to you. He's trying to control you. You need to be free, girl. You need to be able to do whatever you jolly well please. He can't hold you back. Come on over here and eat some of this fruit. And her old silly self, silly self, childlike self, child faith. Are y'all listening to me? She went over there, doubted God, and ate of the tree. And I want you to see this. Watch this. 
after she ate from the tree, what did she do? She experienced this new experience. Oh, oh, I feel good. She was living in rebellion. That's why she felt the way she did. She felt euphoric, but it was really a deception. And what had happened? What happened after that? You know what she did? She became an evangelist for evil. She became an evangelist for evil. She started evangelizing evil by giving it over to her husband. Isn't that something? And ladies and gentlemen, she started preaching the false gospel to her husband. <laughs> Boy, I know y'all don't want to hear it, but it's the truth anyhow. She started preaching false doctrine to her husband. She said, oh, man, you got to come eat from this, Adam. I'm telling you, it's good. God told us not to eat from it. Oh, don't worry about what God said. I'm telling you right now, look, I'm not dead. Have I died? Don't I look better? Don't I feel better? Oh, come on. It's good. Come on in the water. The water is fine, Adam. Come on in here. And she became an evangelist for evil. And that's exactly what these false prophets do. You ain't got to be a woman. You can be a man. You can be a boy, a girl, anything. If you preaching and teaching false truths, in other words, if you are taking the lies and deceptions of the world and passing it off as God's truth, you are a false prophet and you are evangelizing for the kingdom of hell. You're drawing people to come and lose their souls. Lord have mercy. They're always learning, Paul said, but, but they're never gaining a knowledge of the truth. In other words, watch this. Be careful. Hear me, hear me, hear me today. Hear me today. Boy, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm hot today. <laughs> I'm on fire today. Listen, listen. Here's what Paul says. Be weary of people that's always searching for new truth. Be, be careful of people that's always looking for some new revelation, some new vision, some new, we need something new. No, how about trying to do what God has already revealed to you? How about living the truth that God has already shown you? How about that? How about living according to the word of God that you already know? See, the problem is people don't want to live the word of God. They'd rather learn new stuff than follow the truth as God has giving it to us. I'm talking to you and me and myself as much as I'm talking to anybody else. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to wake up. All the truth that we know, we need to start living it. We need to start breathing it. Huh? We need to start bathing in all the truths that we know. I wish I had help in here today. I know I don't, I know don't nobody want to hear it. I don't care. I'm going to preach it anyhow. We need, listen to me. We need to follow what we know. Stop looking for new stuff. I need a new revelation. No, you don't. You need to listen to the revealing of God and Christ that has been given to you. You're not going to get a new word until you follow the word you've already been given. God's not going to give you nothing new. You remember the story of Abraham when Abraham was told by God, I want you to sacrifice your son. You remember that? Do you remember that? You remember that story? And God told him, I want you to bring your son up here to Mount Moriah, and I want you to slay him for me. Ladies and gentlemen, it took days, days and days. And the whole time, you know what Adam, uh, excuse me, Abraham was doing? Abraham was listening out for God. Abraham was praying to God. He's asking God, God, I need a new word. Please give me a new revelation. God said, I ain't talking to you. God, the Bible says, God shut off. He shut off communication from Abraham. He said, I'm not talking to you anymore until you do what I told you to do. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And ladies and gentlemen, when he got to Mount Moriah, when he tied his son up, the son said, uh, uh, Daddy, I don't, I don't see no lambs out here. I, I, I don't see no sacrifices. He said God's going to provide himself a lamb. And ladies and gentlemen, he put his son up on the altar. He raised up that dagger to put it in his son's heart. And that's when God showed up with a new revelation. Hallelujah. 
He said, now I'm that I know that you believe in my word. Now that I know, Abraham, that you trust in me and me alone. He said, don't lay a hand on that boy. He said, I got a lamb over there in the thicket. Get that ram over there in the thicket and sacrifice him. The boy is mine. <laughs> Hallelujah. Abraham wasn't going to hear another word until he did what God told him to do. And that's what many of us, that's where we are. God's not going to give you a new revelation. God's not going to give you no new vision. God ain't giving you no new truth. God's not disseminating any new information to you. God's not even going to hear you. He's not going to answer you until you do what God told you to do. God is not going to listen to nothing else you got to say. Shut up and do what I told you to do. And then you'll see the new me. You'll see the real me. Somebody say amen. I wish I had help in here today. I know I'm preaching hard, but I'm trying to get it through to you guys. I'm trying to get through to us today. We need to understand that we've got to stop chasing all of these red, red engine, uh, 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 fire engines out here telling us, Hey, follow after me. Follow. Emergency, emergency. Pastor, you got to come over here. No. Hey, elder, you got to come over here. No, 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 no. If it ain't got to do with this right here, if it don't have to do with the word of God, I ain't got to do nothing. I ain't got to do nothing. I wish I had help in this church today. Hallelujah. If it doesn't have to deal with the word of God, if it's not talking about salvation by Jesus Christ and him alone, if it's not talking about the truth of the commands of God, I don't need to listen to not one word. Amen. You know why? Because ain't nothing saving me but the word, the living word, Jesus Christ. I wish I had 10 people in here who could slap five with me and say, thank you, Jesus, for the word. Thank you for the word. I don't need to listen to anybody. I don't need to listen to you. But you don't understand. We got issues. We got problems in the community. Yeah, I know we do. But there ain't going to nothing be done until somebody accepts Jesus Christ. I wish I had help in here today. I don't care. Oh, well, you, Pastor, you got to understand. There's a lot of racism out here. Honey, it's been racism ever since the beginning of time. Ain't nothing changed. It ain't nothing going to change until people come to the word of God and submit to the power of Christ. People are always going to hate one another. They always going to find a reason to divide themselves with one another all the time. It's going to keep on happening. I don't care how many laws they change. They can change every law they want to until people's hearts are transformed by the power of God. It's never going to change. It's never going to change. Never going to change. And by the way, and listen, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with pointing out the truth of the matter and, re and, and, and revealing the truth that people are doing things that they ought not do. Are y'all listening to me? But ladies and gentlemen, you can't transform nobody until they receive the Holy Ghost, until they receive the dissemination of the word in their life. That's why you and I need to be about the word. You got to give people the word. You got to give people Christ. You've got to give people God. If you don't give people God, you're telling them to make bricks without straw. You're telling them to change their lives without having any power. You got to give people power to change. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, stop running and chasing after these red, red engines. Stop listening to all these stupid conspiracy theories. Stop listening to all this ethnic stuff. Oh, well, black Muslims, black this, black, 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 black. Listen, let me tell you something. I love black people. I am black. But being black ain't saving nobody. Being black is not saving anybody. But being in a relationship with Jesus will. I wish I had help in here today. You see my glasses are off. That means I'm dead serious. Being black ain't going to save nobody. But being in a relationship with Christ will. Somebody say amen. If, I don't care. Listen, if you're talking to somebody about black, this, black, that, you better tell them about Jesus too. Amen. I know you don't want to hear it. I don't care. I'm not concerned about what you want to hear. I'm concerned about what the word of God says. And God says, nobody can come to the Father but by me. Nobody can get to the kingdom of God without Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I don't care how black you are. 
don't care how white you are. I don't care how Asian you are. I don't care what your color is. I don't care what your, your skin color, your shade, your tone. I don't care what community you connected with. If you don't know who Jesus is, you're going to hell in a handbasket. Hallelujah. So that's what I'm all about. That's what I'm all about. That's all I care about. These are the last days. We ain't got time for chasing fire engines and chasing ambulances. We ain't got time for that. It's time right now to tell the truth, to tell and give the truth of the word of God to the world. That's what time it is. That's what time it is. You want to know what time it is? It's time for you to speak up. You want to know what time it is? It's time for you to stop acting like you don't know who God is. It's time for you to stop acting like you ain't Adventist. It's time for you to stop acting like you don't know what the Sabbath is. It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to tell the truth. It's time for you to disseminate what God has given to you to somebody else. That's what time it is. That's what time it is. Yeah, that's what time it is. Wake up. Wake up. Stop following after this false doctrine, this foolishness out here. Folk out here trying to trick and fool people to follow after them. The next thing you know, they start giving their money over to people. The next thing you know, they start following these idiots that don't have any direction at all from God. Boy, I wish I had time. I'd wear y'all out. Here's what Jesus said. John chapter 8, verse 31. Here's what Jesus said in John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Jesus said this. He said to the Jews who believed in him, he said, if you continue in my word, <laughs> he said, if you continue in my word, <laughs> yeah, my word, not their word, not everybody's word. He said, if you continue in my word, he said, then, then, then you are my disciples. You're my disciples indeed. He said, and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. He said, if you continue in my word, you want to know what truth is? You got to walk in his word. You got to obey his word. You got to obey his command. You want to know what the truth is? You want new revelation? Yeah. You want rainbow word? Get in word of God and follow his commandments. You follow his commandments, he'll tell you more truth. You follow his word and he will reveal more of himself to you. But if you're sitting over here waiting on him to reveal something new while you won't even receive and do what God has told you to do, God ain't giving you nothing new. You wouldn't even do that. You wouldn't even do that to your children. You wouldn't give your children something new and they won't follow your word of what you just told them to do. Why would you do that? That's just stupid. That don't even make no sense. No, you're going to follow what I said first. Then I'll give you something else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 15 and verse 10 says this, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. He said, in order for you to live inside of my love, in order for you, ladies and gentlemen, to be sanctioned and to be sanctified by my grace, you've got to follow what my father commands. You got to keep my commands, just like I follow daddy's commands. Amen. And it's not about earning salvation. That's not, it's not about that. It's about, well, listen, it's about listening, following truth. God does not want you to live in error. He does not want you following conspiracy theories that have no real teeth of truth in them. God doesn't want you following after a false shepherd. He wants you to follow after him. Because he has life and that more abundantly. I'm going to give you one last text and I'm going to let you go today. 2 John chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. 2 John chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. Come with me here. Come with me here. 2 John chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. This is what Jesus says. 2 John chapter 1 verses 9 through 11. This is what G, uh, excuse me, this is what John says. Amen. About the word of God. Here's what he says. 2 John chapter 1, verses 9 through 7. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. This is from the English Standard Version. He said, everybody who tries to move on ahead, who tries to move ahead of God, who's trying to find more and more truth and does not abide in the teaching of Christ, 
He said, you are not gods. He said, you don't have God. Notice verse, notice, notice, continuing verse nine. He does not have God who abides in the teaching and has both the father and the son. Verse 10, if anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, what teaching? That Jesus Christ is the only living Lord and Savior and is the only one who can save you. If anybody comes to you talking about some new gospel that something else can save you other than Christ, other than a relationship with Jesus, if somebody else comes telling you that you can have a great unity of connection with the races without Jesus. Hello, hello, hello. If anybody comes telling you that you can get healing without Jesus among the races, the hatred and the lack of forgiveness and the dispersion and the despairing of one another because of the color of their skin. If anybody tells you that anybody else can heal it but Jesus, he said, don't listen to them. Don't receive them in your home. He said, don't even bring them in your house. Don't even greet them, he said. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked words. In other words, you become an evangelist of evil. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. Ain't nothing going to change till people accept Christ. That's it. That's the only way it's going to transform. Period. Until they accept the truth of the word of God, nobody's changing anything. This world is going to hell. It is going to hell. Are you listening to me today? It is going to hell. And anybody who doesn't see that is as blind as 10 bats in a cave. This world is going to hell. It's time for us. Listen, this is the Titanic out here. And we running around here moving the daggone uh, 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 deck chairs thinking we doing something. You better tell somebody that the, t the ship is going down. There's a lifeboat out here and his name is Jesus. There's a lifeboat out here. His name is Jesus. There's a lifeboat out here. His name is Jesus. I, are y'all listening to me today? There's a lifeboat. His name is Jesus. The ship of this world is going down to hell. And I don't care what you do. Ain't nothing going to stop it. But there is a life raft. There's a lifeboat. There's an ark. Come on, say amen. There's an ark. Amen. And his name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. That's his name. That's his name. His name is Jesus. So we need to stop playing the music on the Titanic. We need to stop moving around the chairs. Huh? Stop the music. Let's get in the lifeboat and get on the heck up out of here. What do you say? What, what do you say? <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. I'm looking for freedom in Jesus. Freedom in the Lord. Freedom in his grace. Freedom in his kindness, his goodness, his mercy. Hallelujah. I'm looking for freedom in Jesus. Is that what you want? That's what I want. That's what God wants for you. He wants you to find the freedom in his son. If that's what you want, if that's what you want, put a one down there right now. Put a one down there. Just comment one down there right now. You want freedom in Jesus and Jesus alone. I want freedom in the word of God and the word of God alone. I'm not listening to any of this other junk. If you're not talking about the Lord, if you're not talking about God, if you're not talking about the word of God, if you're not talking about the things of God, I don't have time. I don't have time. I want Jesus and Jesus alone. If you believe that, put down a one for me right there. I see you. I see you. God bless you. God bless you. Put down a one there for me. Put down a one there for me. I believe that I've got to make the main thing the main thing. I'm not going to follow all these distractions out here. I'm not listening to all this garbage, all these messages people send to me. I'm not, li I'm not listening. I'm not, if it's not talking about God, if it's not a scripture, if it's not the word, if it's not talking about Jesus, I don't have time. I don't have time. It's too late in earth's history for us to be following after these engines, these fire engines and these ambulances. I ain't got time. Number one, I'm putting one down there. Number one is Jesus in my life. I'm putting down number one, Jesus. Jesus, that's who I'm talking about. 
Yes, yes, I'm in the word of God. I see you, I see you, I see you. Hallelujah, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Make the main thing the main thing and all the other truth will be revealed to you. Make the main thing the main thing. Focus on God. Focus on God. Focus on the Lord. Focus on his word. Focus on his goodness. Focus on his truth. Focus on his mercy that's everlasting. Focus on his loving kindness. Focus on God. Stop being focused on all this foolishness out here. It's out here. It's been out here. It's going to be out here. Ain't nothing going to change it unless the word of God is disseminated. So if you really want to transform the world, if you really want to transform your city, your nation, you got to get out here and tell people about the word. Nothing else is going to work. Nothing else is going to work. I believe it. And that settles it. I'm not listening to nothing else. I believe it. Hallelujah. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it for me. I know it's an old saying. I don't care. It's the truth anyhow. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you for your grace and mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the responses of your people today who have said we're going to make the main thing the main thing. We're going to put Jesus first. We're going to put your word first. We're going to do your word first. Then we'll start looking for new revelation. But we're going to do what you told us to do first. So that's why we're putting one down right now, God. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. And I pray, Lord, for each and every person right now who responded to your word today. I ask you, Lord, to give a special dissemination of your Holy Spirit in their lives. Seal their decision, Lord, to put you first. Help us to make the main thing the main thing and help us, Lord, to focus on the word of God as our only dissemination of truth. Help us, Lord, to lean on you and on nothing else. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, for all other ground is sinking sand. Lord, we rest in you. We have faith in you. We trust in you with all our heart. We don't lean to our own understanding. We, in every way, acknowledge you so that, Lord, you can direct our paths. Thank you, God, for your grace and mercy. Thank you, God, for your loving kindness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. If that's Listen, if this has been a blessing to you, praise God for you. I thank the Lord for his goodness and his grace in his word. Continue to pray that God will bless all of us to disseminate the truth as we are living in the last days and the last times. Amen. If this has been a good word for you, please like it and share it on your Facebook page. And please subscribe to the Hillcrest Church, Hillcrest past uh, Hillcrest SDA Pittsburgh. And you can also subscribe to my daily ministry, PTPOG Ministries, PTPOG Ministries. Just click PTPOG in your search engine. It will pull up a purple icon. Click on that purple icon and join. We'd love to have you. By the way, I want you to know we have a YouTube channel connected to our ministry. It's PTPOG Ministries, Practicing the Presence of God Ministries. Practicing the Presence of God Ministries right here on a YouTube channel. We've got our own channel, so you can go and watch the videos at your leisure anytime you want to in the middle of the morning, and you can forward it, backward it. You can do whatever you want to with it. God be with you. God bless you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you. God bless you, and God keep you is our prayer. Have a great and marvelous 4th of July. Have a great and awesome freedom in the Sabbath day. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.